everyone to Seek, Go, Create. This is your host, Tim Winders. This is where we redefine success in leadership, business, and in ministry. Uh, we just love to have great conversations and allow you to listen in. So welcome. Glad that you're here. Glad that you're listening in or watching or wherever you're consuming this. Thank you for all of that. We appreciate you being here. I'll get to our guests in just a moment. But before I do, I just want to encourage everyone to check us out on all the platforms. We're on Twitter. We're on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook. We're, uh, where else are we? Instagram. We're even, we do a little bit over on TikTok, not much, but we're Seek Go Create on all of those places. Check us out, share what we're doing, get the word out, help us to share what we're doing with other people. We appreciate you doing that. And uh, thanks for being here. We appreciate that very, very much. Today we have John Vong as our guest. John founded Local SEO in 2013. Gosh, it seems like it was so long ago now. As a full service digital agency, Local SEO Search is a one-stop shop for small and medium-sized businesses. And I know we've got a lot of you listeners that are in that range. That's who I work with a lot as a coach. And so I know you're gonna get a lot of value from our conversation today. The company provides analytics, design, audits, keyword research, and social media marketing. Local SEO search has been recognized as a top SEO agency in Canada by a leading B2B market research firm. Now, here's something cool about John that I want us to talk about. His parents were among the last of the boat people, refugees who immigrated from South Vietnam in 1980. And John was born just a few months later. That's about when I graduated from high school. Like many newcomers, his family persevered through difficult times and he relied upon help from various community organizations. And I love in his bio that he just acknowledges that they received help because I think in our culture, society, so many times we, we don't acknowledge it. We'd like to talk about being self-made and things like that. So, John, welcome to Seek, Go, Create. Thanks for the intro, Tim. Excited to be on your show today. And hopefully I can inspire people to take action in the realm of SEO, but also throughout my journey, uh, hopefully share with the audience members um, and give some inspiration for some of the, the, the people out there. You know, John, I, I have no doubt that you will. We're going to have a great conversation. And uh, I gave you a little prep on this, but let's pretend we just bumped into each other. I know you're as, at the time of recording, you're in Toronto. You guys are still in lockdown, but let's pretend we're at a social event. We bump into each other. I say, hey, I'm Tim. You say, I'm John. And I say, hey, John, tell me, what do you do? Let's pretend I didn't do the intro or anything like that, but tell, tell myself, tell me, what do you do when you bump into people and they ask that question? So first off, I always tell people I'm a father. Um, so that's most important for me. Um, and then I also tell people I help as uh, small, medium-sized businesses with their advertising uh, or marketing. And I keep it very broad because a lot of people don't know what SEO is, what is involved and what needs to be done. So I don't overwhelm people, but I also always try to just tell people I'm a giver, right? So I help people get better. And through the world of business, that's been my kind of career the last, I would say 15 plus years. Yeah, I, I, I love I love that attitude of just being of the mindset of just helping because uh, that's who I've worked with for most of my career, small, medium-sized businesses. It sounds like you do the same. I think they're the heartbeat of our countries, you know, North America. And listen, it's hard work. <laughs> what, they're, what they're all doing is hard. So I, I appreciate that. I tell you what, let's do this just for definition purposes, and then I'm going to veer a few different directions. We're going to come back to it, but let's go ahead and define SEO for the listener. And then I'm going to go, I want to, I want to hear some of your background and all, and then we're going to come back and do some teaching and training for SEO towards the tail end. Okay. So, but let's first define it. I don't like using acronyms and assuming that everyone knows. So just give us like a second grade definition of SEO. Sure. Uh, SEO is uh, defined as search engine optimization, and it's the optimization of websites to appear on that first page of Google results. So when you type in a keyword, and it could be any product and service that you're seeking out, let's just take an example, pizza shops near me. You type that in in the Google search, and usually at the top, 
there's paid ads. People are paying to play. I stay away from the paid section. I really help businesses appear on the map and below the map because in the mindset of what the users have gone through throughout their behavior to get to that keyword, they want to be given websites that are suitable for the user intent, which is them, that fits their search query. And that's what we help businesses achieve, get in front of more of their ideal customers ready to buy in terms that they want to be known as or be positioned as leaders. Yeah, I, I love that. And, you know, I was just thinking about a longtime friend. I went to school with her and she was one of our first listeners. I'm pretty confident she's still a listener. She runs an HVAC business, you know, heating, you know, uh, air conditioning and all uh, in a town outside of Atlanta in Georgia. And I don't know why, but but Joan came to my mind when when we were talking about this. She's she's been around. She's been successful in her business because of just providing good quality for long term. And I know that that's a piece of what we're going to be talking about here later. And I just wrote a question down that I've got an issue with some things I'm working on for things. And but we're going to get to all that in just a moment, because when I read a bio like yours, John, I as much as I love business, as much as I love all the technical stuff and all of that, I love the stories that people can tell. And so I remember I was just finishing up high school in 1980 when on the news we were hearing about some of the folks that were coming out of Vietnam and, you know, we were a number of years out of, you know, the Vietnam War that was obviously a hot topic in much of the world, definitely in our country. But I'd like to back up and I would love for you to start off by telling me and the, and the listener just a little bit about your parents because to me, I, I don't know, I can't even fathom what it would take for someone to up and leave and to come to a country and just the turmoil and all that. So let's just honor them right now. And, and I would love for you to just take a few minutes and tell me about your parents. Yeah, like they're, you know, they, they gave birth to four children, right? And they sacrificed everything for the betterment of the next generation, which was me and my siblings. So for me, I am forever grateful for everything that she, they have accomplished to get me to not just be in Canada for the abundance of opportunities and choice, but now I have the ability to give back. So acknowledging that. And also I do want to do a plug where two, two years, actually three years ago, I went back to Vietnam with my mom, mm -hmm. also with a company to see how they were, where their business was, where they live. It was amazing. And that brought back a lot of memories and it gave me an opportunity to really look through the lens of what they had lived and kind of left behind. Um, and now, I, I mean, they, they sacrificed everything, gave up everything, lived on a boat or, you know, refugee camp and scraped everything they had to, you know, give it to whoever smugglers or pirates that were trying to take whatever they had to then be able to come to Canada as immigrants. And again, no language, no, like they didn't know English. They had no money, but they had four kids and they were determined to have a better future for us. So yes, it was challenging early days, right? Like for me, I have to admit it was normal because I didn't know better. Right. I didn't have any birthday parties. I didn't travel like people flying. I, I had a free ticket to a festival once a year in Toronto called Canadian National Exhibition. My parents got it gifted for free from the government, right? So that was my upbringing. Yes, we worked hard, but it was different. We worked to help support one another, right? So people have to have a different perspective on the people that are given uh, different situations, right? And, you know, turmoil, like the Syrians right now in different parts of the world, right? There's violent civil war. People do things for not just themselves, for the future of their children. They'll do anything for their children. As a parent, I, I'm sure a lot of the listeners have to understand, like everything you do, you're going to try to leave something behind for your kids. Yeah. So that's what my parents did. They sacrificed and I am forever grateful 
And as I, you know, become more wise and mature, I look back and I always reflect. I always have this perspective of, look, what would I have done differently mm -hmm. if I was, I didn't know what I didn't know, right? I, I grew up in government housing. I saw a lot of things I shouldn't have seen. I've seen a lot of people drop out children, you know, early ages, and that's a part of life. But my parents really pushed us to stay grounded, focus on education, togetherness. Um, we always had meals together at dinner time, right? Like we connected because our support system was each other. So that was so true to how I believe in my, you know, family today, right? Family is everything. And that's the core of my business as well. Like we connect because we understand that together we're way better, stronger, and we're much more powerful than any individual. So yeah, what, just, yeah. That's great. What was their business? Were they, were they business owners uh, in Vietnam? Yes. Or did they work for someone? What was their occupations, I guess, while, before they left? My, my dad had like a parts business for bicycles. So in Vietnam, I mean, you don't have motorcycles or vehicles, you have bicycles, right? So they, they sold parts and they liquidated everything. Um, so I, I think for them, it was that huge sacrifice, right? They had everything there, but they also had, you know, some additional funds than the average, you know, person living in Vietnam to have resources and abundance to uh, liquidate it for gold, uh, physical asset, to give to all the smugglers to get out. So their foresight was, I need to protect my family because I know on the other side, there's way more opportunity. So that's what we were afforded when we were young. Yeah, did you, this is an interesting thing. One of the things I love to do kind of as a coach in the type of business I do, John, is I kind of like to, I don't know if identify or dig or whatever the right word is, what it is that make people tick you know, what it is that's inside their mindset or their drive or, or whatever it is. And I, and I can't remember who I had a conversation with, but it, 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 it wasn't a similar story, but it was in the same vein. And they, they really said that they felt a lot of pressure to succeed because of some things that their parents had gone through. Did you feel, because obviously you've got a successful business now, you you do well, and we're going to get to all those things in just a moment. But what did you feel like as you were growing up? And, and I love, and I'm going to come back to the assistance and all, because we're in such a world where people talk, like I said earlier, about being self-made. I love it when people say, no, I needed community. I needed all these people around me. But, but can you think back of the mindset you had at whatever age, that said, I'm either going to go into business, I want to succeed, I want to make a lot of money, or anything like that, that maybe you could give us some clues as to what made John tick. So early days, it was all about scarcity, right? It was survival. And for me, it was about determination to get started. So I was always curious. I always wanted to fit in, right? To wear nice clothes or any clothes that was kind of modern and you know, in with the times. I also wanted to be socialized. Like I always wanted that disposable income so that I can go for lunch with some of the friends out there, right? Like all these things were driving me because my parents didn't really provide us much. It was more, we have to earn it to then have the funds to do what you need to do. So before I went to college university, I had 20 plus jobs, right? From everything, um, you know, waiter, lawn care, factory. Uh, I was a, at the you know, library, farmer's market, you name it, everything locally, I kind of worked. And I was a newspaper boy at nine, right? Like I just went out there and I had to do things. And so I had a lot of uh, interactions with a lot of different people over the, those years that made me become more curious, right? On how I wanted to take on my life, right? I could have kept doing certain things because yes, you pay, get paid to do certain jobs, but did I want to keep doing that? Like the factory work or lawn care or whatever, like working at McDonald's and being a waiter, not really, right? I knew going through a schooling education, you have budgets more opportunity, right? Um, so then I, I 
watched a lot. Or I actually filtered through a lot of magazines and newspapers, and I saw tons of nice glossy images of like successful people and flying. Like I never flew before, right? Like someone in a nice suit. I never owned a suit. All these things I never had. And that kept me wanting to, you know, try to earn it myself because nothing's given to you, right? So it's all about that grit, determination of persevering and doing things. So I was always moving around, trying new things, engaging with a lot of people and interacting with various people from different aspects of different lives, right? And that's what makes me um, different, I guess, uh, but also a unique and authentic as well, right? Because I have a lot of stories because I can personalize um, with diff my perspective anyways. Yeah, and you're correct. And, and you know, here's the deal. Everybody's got stories. I think there's some people might be listening in going, gosh, I don't have story. No, everybody has story. It's one of the reasons I love doing what we do here with Seek Go Create is that I get to ask people a lot more about their stories. And, you know, we're not a 20 minute podcast. We're about a 60 minute podcast. So I have time to do that. You know, it's not like we're jumping in. Let's talk SEO, which I love that stuff. But no, I, I love to. And, and I'll tell you one thing, you've got such a heart. I can just tell and I actually even read something, I think, on one of your sites that uh, that you've got such a heart of gratitude. And and I can tell you that it even comes across when we speak. And that I think there's power in gratitude and it's un unfortunate that we, it seems like we might be in a little short supply of that in our current culture, uh, as much as we hate to say, maybe there's more of it than we see, but I just want to say what, how, how nice it is to hear the level of gratitude that you have. Now, another thing that you mentioned about growing up was that, you, you know, you lived in government housing, there were some organizations that helped you out. And you just, you kind of boldly put that on your bio that, you know, you guys needed help. Talk a little bit about that, because in this society that we're in, there is this mindset that I, I don't really like, which is, if it is to be, it's up to me, I'm all on my own, all of that. So talk about all the help, not all the help, but just what it does for a person to acknowledge that. Yeah. People are judged, right? And and it's okay. Like I didn't care at that time, and I still don't care right today. And yes, I had Salvation Army, I had food banks to support us as family because my my we were four kids, and we had one toy amongst four kids. We had clothes that we had to recycle, like we had to use the same clothes because of what the state we were in, right? Like. My parents were trying to get a job and it's hard when you don't know the language and you have no skill that's needed in this new country. Like all these things, I, I understand from my perspective what they endured. And that's why at an early age, we all had to stick together and work together to endure it so that we have all education. Like I went to school for business finance university and my, my siblings all are engineers and the, most of them are masters and one's a nuclear engineer. Like we all came out on the better side of things uh, because my parents really focused and pushed us to, you know, you know, just keep going, right? And focus on the career, the opportunities with more choice and abundance versus, you know, settling, I would say. A lot of people settle and looking for the fast way out, quick solutions or ways to monetize and uh, generate some revenue but there's you know it's yeah you mentioned mindset right and my parents really focus on their sacrifice and understanding like children wait like there's always fast ways to earn money but if you stick it out that's gonna really succeed for you in the future right and hopefully that that's what I have become like just looking at what my parents just did my siblings and what we've accomplished to now be in the state and opportunity to now not just be on podcasts and helping influence other people but enjoying it having gone through what I've gone through and going through this journey of like life living right and this lifespan it's a long life that you're gonna live so might as well make the most of it right yeah, I love, uh, you know, there, I just wrote down three words that to me have, can almost summarize the first part of our conversation here. And that is, and they're not necessarily in order, but the, the aspect of hard work, just hearing you 
talk about all the work that you did to achieve and accomplish all the jobs, 20 plus jobs. And then I heard education, it's amazing. Uh, I'm an engineer also, I went to Georgia Tech, so I'm an industrial engineer from Georgia Tech. And, and I hear you talk about all your siblings being engineers, which had to have given your parents great joy to see their children go through the education that's available in the country that they had come to. And, and so that's really cool. But then, but then if you just have those and you don't have that word gratitude that I keep just picking up from you, John, then I still think that there's something missing. So I love that all of that's kind of being mashed together early on this conversation. And we haven't even gotten to the teaching and training and value of SEO, but yet, wait, this could be something really good here. A lot of what we're about to talk about with SEO could need the foundation of hard work. There's work involved. A lot of people are looking for the shortcut for SEO. There's, there's gratitude and just being thankful that we've got these tools and the education, man, maybe all this is coming together. I don't know. Hey, what, one more, one more thing I just want to ask before we kind of move into kind of business and all of that. We are at the time we're recording this, we're a few months out from having a few incidents in definitely the U S and I'm, I'm sure in other parts of the world where there was conflict with, uh, with Asians and also with, with others and the term Asian hate was kind of thrown around a good bit. I, I hope it's okay, but I love to, when I have conversations with someone that looks or has a different background than me, I love to attempt to educate myself on perspective. And so I, I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that. If you just want to say, hey, Tim, you know, it, it's, it's a bigger deal than you think, or it's not, or whatever. But I just would like to allow you to educate myself if, it, if there's anything that I would need to know about the Asian culture or about, and I know we're lumping a lot together here, but anyway, can you speak to anything there that just might be helpful for us as a society? Yeah, I just think the there's, there's a lot of discrimination that doesn't uh, appear present. Like if you're in a social gathering, you probably have a lot of different friends and different upbringings and different regions of the country, right? Yeah. And even growing up, I didn't really realize, but I'm sure there was a lot of hate towards a lot of people that were doing things different, looking different, um, dressed different, right? And that happens everywhere in the world. And, you know, it's how you take it. And it, I would strong power, like my willpower is different than a lot of others. And I just let it go. And that's what I was taught as an early age from my parents. But a lot of people take it to heart. And therefore, they, they're hurt emotionally, physically, and, you know, it's, and it's a lasting impact on their lives, but I kind of let it go. And I look at the positives, right? I look at ways that it can empower me. I have to have a bigger voice. I have to make sure that people realize that, yes, we are all as one. I live in a city in Toronto, Canada, which is very multicultural and there's different ethnicities all over every street. My, my son goes to a school that there's probably 20, or 50 different countries, right? Like, like we're, we're, we're a nation, right? It's, it's crazy. Um, but that's what I want everyone to understand. Like we're all together in this earth and planet um, trying to just live and survive and have a happy, joyous uh, lifespan and, you know, having good times together, right? And why, why judge others, right? Like everyone goes through different situations and it's okay, we're all together. Uh, you know, for me, I, I don't know how bad it is in certain parts of the country and different parts mm -hmm. of the region. Um, but I know there is hate because of the virus, right? And they judge. And, and I get it because they have never traveled. They've never seen how they, the people in Asian countries lived. I've been back. I know how people live in every country, right? And Yes, how, why are you judging based on their upbringing, right? And what they have to endure. Like we have so many choices in this world, like North America, Western society, 
we are the top 5% of the world, right? In terms of wealth and everything that you can afford, computers, internet, electricity, clean water, food, fresh food, like longevity. We have so much abundance of choice. And for these third world countries to not even have power, to not have clean water. Yeah. And then they have to endure all this on a daily basis with you know, climate change and a lot of these global phenomenons. Like, you should always look at what you have and be grateful for what you have and not judge others because everyone's going through their circumstance. And, and so might as well take advantage of what you have and make the most out of it. Yeah, I love one of the things you said is something that I think about often. And, and I grew up in the southern part of the United States, but I've always, not always, at least beyond a certain age, I, I began traveling. And now, obviously, my wife and I, we, we travel all the time. We live in an RV and travel. And, and one of the things you said that I think it's vital for, for people, and that is to get outside of their, what I call their comfort zone, and experience different things. I love that you, with your mother, went back to your country and probably visited other places. It's been very educational for me just to go to other places and be around people that didn't grow up the way I grew up. Now, I'm not saying one's good or bad or anything. It doesn't, you know, it is what it is. That's the human race that we're in. And I just think it helps expand our mind by interacting with other, you know, you mentioned Toronto, you're in a melting pot there and big city and all of that. And, and your, your children will be exposed to a lot, but you know, at some point y'all probably need to go out and experience a small town somewhere, right? Yeah, I was born and grown up an hour away from Toronto, um, yeah. and it was a smaller town, and we were kind of the like maybe a dozen other Asians in the city, right? Like there was a lot, a large population, so we looked different, and that's what I mean. Like it happens. It's just how do you present it, and how do you want to be perceived, right? And yeah. how do you take it as cool. an Asian or any other culture? And you know. It, Yes, a lot of people mentally are weak. And I feel just growing up in the situation that I've grown up, um, you know, when food and survival is more important than just what people say, it doesn't really impact my life, right? So I just let it go and move on with my life because there's things that are much more important, like survival and food and shelter than what people say about you. Yeah, so, so one of the things, that's a great way that I could kind of move into our business conversation, one of the things that to me should always cut through all of those things is the aspect of business, providing a service, helping others. Then there's obviously profit involved. And of course, when you're looking at all that, we need to market and spread a wide net so that people know what we're doing. So that is a great transition for us to move into something that to me in many ways is a great equalizer. And that is the thing that most of us should be doing, which is going out and what is it we do for commerce? What does we do to, what do we do to make money and things like that? So, so let's go ahead and start talking SEO and all that you've done. Give me, as we do that, because I want to know how someone moves into like SEO or, or all that you're doing with your agency, give a brief history of your business experience. It said since 2013, you've kind of had this business, but, but I think I, did I see yellow pages somewhere? Do you have a yellow pages background? Yeah. So I, after my business uh, studies, I was in advertising sales for 10 years and I worked in traditional advertising, um, like the print media, magazines, trade shows. And then I dabbled in online performance based. So I learned about you know, CPM, email, uh, contextual ads, paid ads, social, all that stuff. Uh, and then I worked at Yellow Pages for five years. And that's where actually all, all those 10 years, I learned a lot about businesses. And because I was frontline in advertising sales, I was pretty much the, the face of the company. I learned how to connect with business owners, listen intently, and really provide value based on the brand and the product that I was selling. And yes, there were restrictions. There were 
things that were outside of my boundaries and therefore you know working with so many of them like i think over the years i've worked with 5000 plus business owners and then then transitioning so i knew there was a shift right working in advertising sales you know there's different media of choices that people can spend money on traditional versus digital and with the advent of speed processing power information age internet connectivity the speed of you know processing power like email and websites being so easily accessible and then at your forefront in terms of like connecting and finding things so quickly it was just uh, you know time more than anything that you have to adapt to the change um so i could have stuck at yellow pages or i could have listened to the, what the customer said and tried something different or i could have continued working in corporate like going to google themselves or facebook or amazon and other forms of advertising sales but i chose the path of not knowing anything about seo but wanting to help those business owners that were stuck they were frustrated but didn't know who to trust but wanted to go with someone that can help them become more visible in this new way of how users were now navigating and finding their products and services. So that's how I ventured into this new uh entrepreneurial business of mine um because it was more about the needs of the customers and the demands that they were talking about and I filled that gap and I just didn't know much about running a business and didn't know anything about SEO. I had to figure that out just like everything else I've been kind of figuring out when i was younger i just had to figure it out but yeah, more in a grand scheme like bigger scale because uh, you know marriage buying a house all those bigger um you know factors in life but just like in life you make decisions and you stick with your guns right and you stay committed and stay the course right and so that's why i've been doing yeah and life's all about figuring stuff out i, I love the i love the yellow pages reference because it has a flashback flashback for me when I came out of uh, college, out of university, I went to work for Bell South in the Atlanta area. And, you know, one of their big, you know, verticals that still at that time was the Yellow Pages. And I guess, I hate to ask this, I know they still exist. It's just, I haven't heard much from Yellow Pages because really what you did is you really transitioned from the last generation SEO, yellow pages, search, look up, hard book, things like that to what is now the search of today, which is SEO. So you, you're kind of in the same thing. You just change the technology, right? Yes, it's a, a little bit different because uh, understanding the algorithm of, of Google is a little bit more challenging than uh, a printed book that goes out once a year and, and just pay to play, right? It's like yeah. biggest ads get, the first placement and uh, alphabetical categories, pretty straightforward mm -hmm. in the mindset of how things have changed and transitioned to this digital age. Um, but it's a very similar concept, right? When people are ready to buy, they used to pick up the phone book and you had a phone, um, you know, the, those rotary phones that, that you press the numbers and a lot of listeners might not even know what that looks like because they're all smartphone today or voice search. But that's how people found businesses printed once a year and it went out free to every single home business storefront. And when you're looking for a dentist or a pizza shop, you can find it in a flyer, newspaper, magazine, or that book that is comprehensive, most up to date. And if you weren't there as a business owner, you'd miss out on a whole year of the best type of marketing advertising that you would have you know, lost a hundreds of percentage of ROI, right? Like it was, you needed to be there. So today, Google, if you're not on Google, you're missing out on a huge opportunity of not being at least visible in the eyes of what your customers are seeking out. For yeah, your it's, it's so funny. I'm, uh, I'm just outside of the Atlanta area now visiting my parents here, checking in on them as we pass through. And I can almost guarantee you that if I go back over to their house shortly, and look through some of their cabinets, I will find a printed phone book and a printed, probably some type of yellow pages. It might be a little dated because I haven't actually had a physical copy of any of that. I mean, I, I live pretty minimalist in the RV, but, uh, and there are probably people listening in going, what are they talking about? <laughs> but 
so we're gonna we're gonna move up to to you know 2021 and uh, and talk about the things that that we need to know now. And you you brought it up a second ago. You brought up Google. You know we've we've you gave our definition earlier of search engine optimization. And so what I'm gonna do here, we're gonna, we're gonna move around a little bit in our time together, but what I really would love for the listener to come away with, if they have a business that needs more SEO, which I would argue a lot of, almost all of them do, then I would like for them to get a few tangible things that they can learn from us. And, uh, and if they're not in business, I just want them to learn more about what this is. So I'd love for us to do that here over the next few minutes. All right, we gave the definition earlier. So John, what I'd love for you to do now, let's go ahead and talk about, um, you mentioned it a second ago, but let's go ahead and go a little bit deeper. Why is it important for an, a business, an organization to be mindful of search engine optimization and what's going on with all the algorithms. Why do they need to know? Why, why do they even need to know that stuff? Well, if you invested in your business and you know you, you probably have a storefront, either physical, you pay rent, you put signage and you expect people to come to the store to buy your product and service. Or you build a website and you put a lot of time and effort creating nice visuals, some content, and therefore you expect people to just show up. Right. It's like having a telephone number, but not be having a place for people to call you or find you. So it's like having a website without search engines, but search engine sorts all these different terms and keywords and stuff so that it makes it easy for your potential prospects, buyers who are actively seeking out the products and services that you may be offering so that you can potentially show up, be more visible, top of mind. Right. Um, and it's usually a free way, but mo majority of the people in the world have trusted to Google and yes, there's search engines like Yahoo and Bing to do their best job to match the websites with your search results, your search queries. And therefore as a business owner, which now you've invested some money or you haven't yet built a website, you need to show up for people who are seeking out your products and services, right? And this happens on a daily basis, hundreds of times a day. And if you're not there, you're missing out on abundance amount of opportunity who, and Google, a lot of people trust Google as their one stop shot for anything to do with any product and service, unless it is like a shopping site. People go to Amazon to buy product, right? Um, they might go to, you know, some classifieds on Facebook, but they don't shop on Facebook. They don't shop on Instagram. When you're looking for a bigger ticket, like if you offer a service, HVAC, dental, pizza, whatever, you go to Google and you type in coffee shop near me, pizza shop near me, or dentist in Atlanta or whatever. Yeah. That's typically the behavior of what users, your, your customers are typing in. So you as a business owner, there's different ways to get in front of that. And that's what SEO is. It's about understanding what you offer, positioning yourself as a leader, industry thought leader, um, expert, so that you can be served up more frequently at as many keywords that you can think of um, and that your customers are seeking out so that Google trusts that you're providing the best user experience where Google, their job is to ensure that these websites match the intent of the user so that user continues coming back to Google. Mm. And if you're trying to trick them, don't, because they're gonna find out. So that means you have to run a really well-oiled machine in terms of running a good solid business. Right. And so I work with more established businesses, get found more visible because they understand how important Google plays in the whole journey of that buyer buyer behavior um yeah. yeah that's good i think i heard the example recently it's like uh if you ignore all of that it's the equivalent of having a storefront that you've boarded up the storefront and taken down your signs and not even acknowledge that you're open and you just are hopeful that people knock on the back door to come in and out and all so so that's good all right there there's you know we 
we can't have this discussion without the word Google being involved. So I, I think I want to jump high level real quick and just ask you, because Google's always in the news. I, I think I read even just this morning that the EU is, uh, you know, looking at them for some antitrust things and all of that. So, and you, you used the word trust in the same sentence with Google just a little while ago also, you actually said, does Google trust you? But I wanna flip it around and, and just ask you, I know it's algorithms and all of that, but is it good that Google has all of this? I mean, it may not matter, but do we trust Google with all of this information and what's going on, John? <laughs> well, I, I look at the banks, right? And I look at any, software out there and I look at email, these tools make your life easier. It yeah. makes, you know, and that's, therefore you're giving up something. And that is usually data, right? And therefore yeah. privacy issues occur. Um, you know, Facebook, Instagram, all these big companies, their main revenue source is that, you know, data analytics, right? Like data, which is, people's intent users and they bucket you based on like how you shop and behaviors and all that stuff because they want to retarget ads to you and the, the main driver is ads right so understanding the business model behind all these businesses gives you a big starting foundation of how you can position your business so that you can front run how they make money they still need people like us because we're trying to make this user experience of the, you know, Google search results and the algorithm better because yeah. we're not fast tracking and hacking and trying to black hat different techniques so that businesses appear faster. We're doing it the right way, which a lot of businesses are trying to fast front it, right? Um, so they still need people like us and we're just working with good business owners that know how to run good businesses to make them more visible because a lot of businesses forget how important it is to have this digital presence. That website should you be your number one digital asset piece today. But a lot of people think social media is it. It's one touch point. And yes, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and YouTube are great mediums, but when they're ready to buy, do they go to Facebook to seek out your product and service? Do they go to Facebook to look for a pizza shop? Do they go to Facebook to look for a dentist or a home renovation or a realtor or any of that? Probably not. So there's different engines out there for different purposes. And therefore, Google has solidified that search intent and they're in control. And there's a big difference because Facebook, you're pushing ads at people. Twitter, you're pushing ads. Even LinkedIn, pushing ads at people. Google, yes, you have the option to push ads, but you're also in control of your entire behavior. And therefore you can own a piece of that real estate. And there's a big difference, renting versus owning assets. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if your listeners are real estate owners or renters, but I would always want to own a piece of asset that potentially can appreciate and you know, not pay rent because you're making that landlord, you know, a little bit more wealthy, right? So as a business owner, owning, owning versus renting and understanding that you can front run it because Google is giving you this opportunity to now be more visible and more prominent. And you just have to understand what they're looking for. Yeah, and I, I love that. The example I like to use is that, are you gonna play in your own sandbox or are you gonna play in someone else's sandbox? And uh, a lot of people are building their business presence on a social media platform that could literally change, disappear, kick people off, <laughs> you know, with, with, with just one decision. And I, I think you participate, but don't necessarily put all your eggs in that basket. So I love how you use the analogy to real estate also. Before we go too much farther, though, I think there'd be value in asking you brought up black hat, you, you brought up shortcuts and some things that people may do that are not long-term thinking and not bringing value. 
go ahead. I'm going to ask you to peel back, peel that back a little bit and give us some examples of mistakes or bad practices. Because listen, I know if someone owns a business that they get advertised by people that are promising a lot of things. They're promising them to be number one with doing this and doing that. And I won't go into all that. You've seen more of it, but before we talk about good practices and some, some ways to bring value, talk about some of the big mistakes or challenges or things that people need to watch out for. Yeah, that's a great uh, question you're posing because just like you mentioned, um, people are bombarded with promises, guarantees. Uh, you pay for what you get, typically in life, not just advertising and in business ownership. And if you've been in business for a while, you know how hard it is. To not just survive, pay your bills, but also succeed, right? Be successful to hire people to then scale and grow, right? So if someone guarantees something, it should be very red flagged because there's no company. Google doesn't guarantee results. Facebook doesn't guarantee. Newspaper, radio ads, any of those media choices does not guarantee any results yet. You believe these, some, someone emailing you to say, I'm going to be number one and guarantee you this, 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 mm -hmm. it's really going to fly. They do not own Google. Google would even guarantee that. You pay paid ads on Google and they don't even guarantee you that you're going to be at the top, right? There's so many th red flags along that. And I focus on just doing things the right way, which is there's a lot of guidelines. There's a lot of insight that Google provides. You can follow it. You can read it and tweak and try. And there's people like us that actually enjoy this stuff. We look at websites, we look at opportunities, we see what the competitors have done and not done and uncover gaps to really position the, you as a business owner so that you can overtake them. Um, but doing it the right way, because we have a lot of tools, experience and expertise in all facets that Google's looking for. Um, so yes, hiding, you know, hiding a lot of links and black hat is like stuffing them with a ton of things that are illegal. Stay away from that. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If you're a business owner, if you've heard it before, and it all applies to like, I, I don't know if the listeners are multi-level marketing as well. It sounds too good to be true. Ponzi schemes <laughs> existed for many years. It probably is, right? Um, so do not get duped. Really think about it. Why are things priced so different? And there's a huge gap. And who is selling that service product? Like, can you meet them, see them? Can you call the references? Like, do your betting. Right. Just like if you're going to buy a home, are you just going to throw a couple hundred thousand dollars at home? Or are you going to vet that real estate agent? Find out if you can get a loan from a bank. Why is there a huge mortgage as application process? Right. They want to make sure that you're accountable to pay back the loan. If it sounds too good to be true. Don't do it, man. So, John, one of the things that a lot of people will use, I think, maybe to manipulate those questions and then I think for the business owner, they kind of get glazed over eyes when they start hearing talk of algorithms and you need to understand how the algorithms work. And most people don't even know what algorithms are, much less understand how they work. I mean, not everybody's an engineer, right? You know, it's like, hey, at least we know what algorithms are. But, but what, what do we need to know? What's like basic 101 that listen, you don't need to understand the algorithms, but this is what you need to understand about them. Help us out there, because I think that might be the foundation for people getting a basic understanding of what they may need to do. So look at your user behavior. Why do you go to Google? How do you shop first off? And what are you looking for? And if it's usually a bigger ticket item, maybe it's a chiro, chiropractic, you know, injury, or you go for a massage therapy or a dentist, you're probably going to vet, you're going to check out reviews, you're going to check out their website, you're going to call three, check out their, you know, do some references and all that stuff, yeah. right? Because you want to have that good feeling that they're going to last. They're going to be the people that they're going to say on their website and perceive from others, right? 
that's typically what's going on today. By mm. the time they check you out, look at your website, call you, they've known everything about you. They've checked your asset pieces from social, third-party review sites. If you have video, every, everything about you, they know. Now it's about pricing and it's about if you're going to be what they say and see out there and if it's alignment. So usually a lot of business owners don't understand that SEO is the, the behind the scenes of what goes on, that it's hard. It's like running a business, right? No one understands how hard it is until you actually jump in and do it yourself. I bootstrap this business, so I know how hard it is. And for any entrepreneur or business owner that either bought a business or ju is jumping into business ownership, you get it. You understand how hard it is to survive. And some days you want to just have a salary, right? And not want to work crazy hours. But imagine that. And now Google gives you an opportunity to be in front of people that are seeking out your product and service. So with Google, wanting to match experts in their domain, niche, category, location with the users who are actively seeking out your product and service and you just being that leader in the eyes of Googles and the users, it's about positioning. It's about, yes, it's not easy. Just like the authors, just like community leaders, just like thought leadership speakers, keynote speakers, it takes time, right, to get to that position. And what we do, or any SEO people out there, is trying to shrink time to do things and finding gaps on the opportunities so that you can generate more lift, more traffic, more opportunities, so that users who are actively seeking out the product and service can find you. Hopefully that kind of summarizes it. No, yeah. yeah. I think that's good. And uh, you brought up something that might be a clue to why it's such a challenge for a lot of people. And that's, you mentioned time. Uh, a lot of people, almost everyone probably is impatient to some degree. And they want to uh, write a check or, you know, pay someone. And, and then we want business coming in. We want people coming through our doors or we want our phone to ring or coming to our website, whatever that means. And, and you mentioned the ability to shrink time a little bit, that that's what you could do. But my guess is it's not necessarily flipping a switch. Yeah. So talk just a little bit about, let's set some expectations on how long it can take for someone to get to this place. I've, I've been working on our site with our podcast for going on two years now and it doesn't seem like it ends <laughs> so, but but i mean get get some expectations here i mean can someone see results in 24 hours 24 days 24 months what should they expect uh, yeah so that's a great question because there's probably a handful of questions that we get daily um how fast how mm -hmm. much and when am I going to see the actual fruits of your labor, right? So um, timeline, I've seen clients rank in a month. I've seen clients rank in three years. It all de depends on perspective where you're at benchmark. So you got to look at your current state, what have been done and what needs to be done and who are the major competitors, which keywords are going after. Is it a competitive keyword, high volume, high traffic, high broad terms um, or a very niche um, and looking, and I, I always boil down to like, what do you want to be known as in your industry? And mm. who are your customers typing in keywords, right? Like, what are they typing in? And it's all about conversion rate, more so than just getting found for the broad terms, because no one's buying dentists uh, in Atlanta, right? It's probably, I need a root canal you know, as a specific service, or I need teeth whitening, I need veneers, I need yeah. specific things like crowns, right? That's what users are typing in. So why just appear as a dentist? Like that could be other shopping, like other agencies trying to monetize, but really not your customers. So really understand who your customers are 
and really focus on creating content, answering questions, positioning yourself for your customers, and more so your ideal avatar persona customers so that you can then position yourself as a thought leader for just your ideal customers. So that shrinks time and gets you the best quality of leads um, when done right. Yeah, I was. I think you just answered the question, but I'll, I'll go ahead and ask it. I'd had this question of for the person that it, let's just say they haven't thought much about SEO or any of those things yet. They either own a business or they're in a role that they need to know about it. I was going to ask you, what is the first thing that they need to consider? I think you answered it is think about what do they want to be known for? What is their audience? But is there anything else? I mean, you, you kind of just briefly mentioned content. So maybe go down a little bit deeper and talk about what kind of content, what do they need to put up there? A bunch of images, a bunch of articles Do they need to be bloggers. Do they need to be pro bloggers? What, what, what do they need to do once they decide, once they've listened in to this far of this podcast and say, huh, I probably should do something. What should they do? So a lot of people don't even put a lot of time and effort in building a proper website. So first off, building a website is the, the biggest asset piece digitally that you can own, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you got to set your foundation up right, just like when you build a home, right? It's like that core foundation. You need that. Yeah. And therefore, you need that core foundation of running a business. You need to know how to run a business, customer service, operations, accounting, bookkeeping, sales, marketing, all that stuff, supply chain. Understand what your customers want who they are and fulfill it with content on your website. Content can come from all these different forms, video, audio, images, and written. And therefore everything in your website should speak to your type of clients that you want to attract and answer their problems with a solution that you can deliver. So it's not rocket science, but a lot of people don't even think about that first off. So I always take a step back and say, who are your 10 best customers in the lifetime of your business. Go out there, have lunch with them. Go out there, have this Rolodex of questions to find out all their pain points and who they like dealing with and why, right? What, who do they hang out with? What's the persona like? All that questions, right? Then you, everything you create now is to answer who they are, right? On that website. And then it's about, yes, frequency of a blog, then you can amplify in social media, get some backlinks, get some articles, go out there, sponsor, write articles, go out there, speak, go create a book. There's a lot going on, webinars. It's not a standalone one thing, then you're merely going to be on that first page. It's not as simple as that because Google is smart. They only want businesses that are established, businesses that are leaders in their space because what so they don't want is someone to trick the system or hack it. And then it's a very poor user experience because customers are then going to have a bad review because they didn't get what they were sold. Right. So it's all in alignment. It's psychological, right? It's all about like run a good business, build a good website, start positioning yourself. And you cannot jump from an entrepreneur startup to then getting on that first page for the most, the highest, uh, you know, search volume, most competitive keyword term when someone's been doing it for 10 years. It's not realistic either, right? So be realistic with everything that you're looking at doing and don't just be so, don't get sold with people that are dangling this idea and concept and price in front of you. Sure, yeah, and this, this might be a little bit of a sidebar, but I, I don't think so. I've got a site with one of our um, one of our businesses that it has just really been aggravating me. The site speeds, you, you know, Google, we've, they've got these places you can go check things now and our speeds are just not doing well. I've had people look at it. We've tried, we've optimized, we've tried, it's still, and Google just tells us, I mean, how important are those things? You said build a good website. That includes lots of things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Speed is one of the factors for user experience. Um, just like the, the first above the fold content, images, call to actions, 
your statements and what people are actually seeking out. Speed, if people are taking, you know, it takes three seconds or longer to load a page, people are pressing that back button. So you have to understand what customers expect today and what Google's trying to do is provide the expectation of what the users are doing. So you play by the parameters of what the users want. And therefore, site speed, building a website on a, a theme means you're probably putting a lot of plugins in there, which slows down the entire web website. But if it's a hard coded site, it allows for you to compress a lot of things, remove a lot of the code that speeds up a lot of the different issues at a lot of websites that expect these plugins to save you speed. Really, it's more of a detriment. So depending on where you're at in your business, I would say if you have the ability to custom website it versus build a theme, buy a theme base, WordPress, Joomla, or any of the other platforms like Wix, Squarespace, Shopify, all that, slows things down. Yes, you pay for what you get. That's the other thing. You pay a hundred bucks, you expect fast speed, or you pay for a custom website to allow for all these other parameters that will give you a better user experience. Right. Okay. So a few things here we got where I'm looking at our time, but I want to get, I want to, I want to hit a few audience members that questions they might have. We talked about one-on-one -on -one getting started, but what, what does someone need to do on an ongoing basis to monitor and watch this? Is there a place they could go check information? Is there some way they could test themselves? I know you guys do audits. We'll talk about that in just a moment as we as we finish up. But what should someone be doing regularly to monitor how they're how well how do they grade themselves? So this is an expertise that a lot of business owners don't even want to jump into yeah. because it's very complex, right? It's like it's a new language for a lot of people, let alone a website. They think social media is the same thing as SEO. And therefore, yes, there's software out there. We use all the software stacks to monitor the ranking, the keyword density, volume, velocity, links, as well as the, the multitude of things that goes on with the algorithm shift, right? Um, how frequent should you start creating content? It all depends on where you're at, how frequent your other competitors are putting it up and what your customers want ultimately. Mm -hmm. um, and listen to your customers because some of them are create a one article of 10,000 words every three months versus it's better to position yourself as a thought leader, which is an expert. It's going to get amplified, shared. It's going to get, a, you know, a lot of backlinks because it's going to get some PR coverage versus writing 500 words, a lot easier, but no depth, no substance, right? Mm -hmm. um, so think about you as a user. If you were to buy your product and service, would you want that 500 piece article or that 10,000 piece article that gives you every little nugget in there? Um, so then that's the content piece. And then of course it's the amplification, right? How do you get other people to know about you? Yes, you can amplify through paid ads. You can go on social, you can go and share through other bloggers and all that other stuff. It's a lot of time. It's the relationships that you have with other people to amplify it. And just like in the real world in business ownership, how hard is it to get word of mouth and referrals? Mm -hmm. You do good work. They like you. They share who they work with to others. Very similar to this whole web online space. There's no difference. Build a relationship, get known in the industry, share good content, let other people amplify it because they trust that you're putting out good work. Yeah, that's all of that's so good. And, and, but, but there's, that actually leads to a great question that I have. I know many business people are going to be sitting here going, Hmm, I'm really good at making widgets, but I don't want to write a blog. I don't want to do, I mean, and I think, I think, I think people are better at it than they probably will admit. Maybe they just don't want to. It's a muscle. They haven't worked, whatever that that's fine. But I know that one thing that's going through a lot of people's heads is, huh? I wonder what it would look like for John and maybe his team to help me with that. So 
as kind of as we're wrapping up here, our last few questions, what I'd love for you to do is talk about the type company business that you guys specifically work with, maybe define your ideal client, and then tell people what an engagement might look like, just so they have an understanding. And then as we wrap up, I'll tell them if, how they can, you can let them know how they can get in touch with you. If they want to do that, they can do that on their own. But uh, so ideal client, and then what an engagement might look like. Yeah, so I always look at like, if you're a business owner, you have gaps, right? You know what you're good at. You, you create widgets or you like dealing with customers, but you outsource sales and marketing. You outsource operations, accounting, bookkeeping, supply chain, all the other stuff. Marketing is a big, big piece. Email marketing, social media marketing, content, SEO, website design, website updates. So with what we do, we focus on SEO, which is positioning yourself so that you get found. So our ideal customer is more established business that understands how to run a business, which I don't want to teach people the fundamentals of how to sustain and generate that's, revenue. And that's growth. what I do. I'm a coach. That's what I do. Oh, to get you started. Then I focus on um, our type of clients are service type, you know, this SMBs that provide a service of a larger ticket item than a product. So a product are more Amazon, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, paid ads, not really my cup of tea. Shopify sites are product based. Then it's more about, I deal with a lot of B2B too, mid market, larger companies, because they're, they understand the importance of not just branding, but visibility. And for the terms, they want to become a leader and thought leader, right? So those are typically my ideal type of clients I like dealing with service-based SMBs in any uh, niche, right? Medical, health, trades, you name it, right? Um, and then in terms of what was the other question, Tim? Well, what I want I want to clarify one thing before that. Get to the, uh, is it you've got local SEO in your name? So does it have to be just a local business? Could it be more regional or national in scope? And then yeah, the so other I, is, and then the and then the follow up question is, what would it look like to engage with you? What does that engagement look like? Um, so my name is local SEO search. The reason is I've um, worked with so many local businesses. Right. And local just means you probably service clients, not just locally, regionally, provincially, uh, not provincially, but nationally and internationally. And that's fine because we we know how to optimize. We always tell people to start in a local area and then expand once you get traction. Right. And you're, you're generating more revenue. Um, so that's typically the radius kind of thing um, and then the typical engagement starts off with uh, yes we you can take a look at our website take a look at what we do if that seems like a good fit fill out the form we we do kind of a, a phone call to find out if it's going to be a good fit in relationship depending on what your needs are um, and then it's a website audit we take a look at where you're at and who your major competitors are and what are the terms of what they've done and where you want to be and then we have a roadmap to kind of give you an idea of what, what it takes, how long it takes, what is done. And it gives you a good perspective because it, it's a journey. It's a relationship that we're playing mm -hmm. to make sure that not only are, you're a good business owner and you're a good fit, but we want to do business with someone that understands how to run a business that are good people, right? So I really focus on, you know, helping good businesses that are struggling with this digital piece and SEO in particular, because it's the hardest piece of this digital landscape. Like paid ads is pay to play typically. Um, and there's hundreds, if not thousands of agencies doing that. But there's only a select few that actually do SEO the, the way we do, because I've taken what big brands have done in-house or outsource to the SMB level with the same skill level and training. So, and offered at a, a price point that SMBs can afford where that's that's a lot of you know for me i feel i'm bringing a lot more value to the the smbs because i know there's a huge segment that's underserviced and they're looking for a good relationship that is really focused on results but looking for a trusted company that can do what they say they're going to do so i invest heavily on my team training software staff and just staying on top of what's going on to serve the customers who are seeking out just 
a good relationship. So I've dealt with a lot of com companies to, uh, and I still deal with them since I started, right? So I've, my focus is to retain a long-term relationship with clients because as they grow, they want to grow with someone they can trust. And then we harvest more of a relationships for the long run. Sure. What is something that you've learned about businesses, business owners, businesses that kind of crosses all the spectrum? Because I know we've got business owners. We've actually got ministry leaders. We've got leaders that listen in. What's, what's like one little tip that you've seen that the successful business owners seem to always do or have or, or, or something? And I just got to thinking that this is not a planned question that you interact with a lot of business people, what have you learned from all of them that you see the successful ones do over and over again? I, I think success is, uh, you know, determined and fulfilled by different metrics, right? So a lot of people, success could be spending more time with others. It could be monetary, it could be growing, scaling, giving back. There's a lot of different factors, right? But what I found is leaders, true leaders, entrepreneurs, people that, have kind of understand how to live fulfillment with happiness and joy. Um, they're very decisive and they understand that they can't do everything themselves. They would rather know and hold strong relationships of trust. And that's what I've learned over the last, I would say almost 20 years of starting running businesses and also working with thousands of business owners. They, have clarity on what it means to them on the relationship. And what I focus more heavily on is using my gut instinct and working with real, true, honest people that want to make a difference, right? And that are givers in their own right, right? Like versus takers, there's a big difference. And I, I really want to help SMBs. I really want to, because as you know, um, they are the heart of every single community. They work the longest, hardest. They were hit the hardest during this pandemic. Um, and yet they, you know, don't complain. They show up every day. They give it all. They have to service. And they take a brunt of all the blame in this world, right? Yet it's not fully funded by lobbyists and people VC-backed and all this startup money. I mean, these are usually hardworking families, right? Neighbors community leaders, like if you have hobbies and interests, these guys are it, right? Your people that you see on the street. Uh, and they're just trying to survive with their own family, right? They're, they're just trying to survive. And that's what I mean. Like I need to support these people because no one else is. And I can feel it. I know what I'm trying to do will make a small difference in people's lives if they're ready to commit. A lot of people don't know what they don't know, right? So I, I have a whole huge... A project of trying to educate and inspire people to take action with SEO. Yeah, that uh, that was so good. I'm so glad I was provoked to ask that because I was going to ask another question to kind of do a wrap, but that was perfect. That was a perfect exclamation point on our conversation about business. So thanks for sharing that. Hey, John, before I, I get to one last question, but before we do that, share with uh, the folks that are listening, we'll include it in the notes, the ones listening how can they connect with you, get some more resources, just reach out to you if they're interested in, in just maybe getting a question or at least you know, maybe engaging with you and seeing what that might look like? Yeah, definitely. You can check out the website. It's uh, localseosearch.ca. Um, we're based in Toronto, Canada, but we also have the .com for servicing global. Um, and you can also reach out to me directly. I think the best channel for me is LinkedIn. You can find me on John Vong, V-U-O-N-G, and I am the founder of Local SEO Search. Um, so for me, just reach out, have questions. I'm here to support, help SMBs, and hopefully you can make the right decision with whatever venture and avenue in terms of marketing, advertising there is. Yeah, I love, I love your mindset of serving and helping others. I appreciate that. Final question, we are Seek, Go, Create. John, and those are the three words that we use to describe what we do here. Which one of those words resonates, means more to you right now than the other two, and why? I've always been a goal kind of person. Um, either it's success or not, failure, 
um, at least you're taking action. And, you know, yes, I create a lot of things, but I go all the time. And by going, I don't live with regret. So that's very important in my life and for a lot of founders and entrepreneurs. I mean, I would say we are different. We're unique um, and just keep trying different things, right? Failure is not in my DNA. I, I really want to help others. And even though I might not be successful or not, or I am, it doesn't matter because for me, I'm still giving it all. Yeah, well, thank you so much because what you just described is really a big theme of what we do here, which is redefine success. You brought it up earlier that there's so many metrics to define success. And so that was a great response. John, I appreciate you being a guest on here. I know it's brought a lot of value. If you're listening in and it gave value to you, I'm going to ask a big favor. And that is take a screenshot or, or share it. Many of the apps that you listen in, or if you watch this video, you have the ability to share, please share this with others that you know can get value from the conversation that that I had with John and all the teaching and training and the and the things that he did for us please do that because that's how that is the number one way that we're able to share the message of seek go create and what we're doing here and as always every monday we have a new episode that drops so come back next monday subscribe and rate and review if you haven't done that already and I just want to encourage you until next time, continue being all that you were created to be.